All right, so we're going to be doing Griffith's problem 3.40 out of Griffith's quantum mechanics. All credit to this for this problem goes to Griffith's. It's a fantastic problem. And in this problem, we're going to be showing that the expectation value of our position can be expressed as a trig function uh, for a quantum harmonic oscillator. So let's get started. And this is what we want to end up showing. This is the result that we want to get. So we're given the following here, and then we're also given this general uh, wave function. All right, and this is what we're going to use. And now in chapters one and two, we would solve for the expectation value of position by just taking the integral over all space of x Uh, times psi star times psi or you know however you want to do it just integrating over all space okay and we're essentially going to do the same exact thing except now we're going to be using our x hat operator all right or our x hat operator is going to be given as h bar divide 2 m omega square root of all that uh times our raising operator plus our lowering operator, all right? So we're going to end up plugging this in and going through that way. So what we end up having is we're going to have our expectation value of position is going to be, you know, sum over, we're going to go psi star, then we're going to plug in what we had before, and then psi dx. And the nice thing is that we know what psi is. We're given psi, we're given psi star. So we can actually expand this out in terms of, you know, how we, how we expect things to happen. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have two sums over n states and uh, n prime states. And then we're going to get uh, two different constants. We're going to get a uh, CN star and a CN prime. All right. Then we're going to obviously have our sine and psi star. We can combine both of those exponentials from what we're given right here. We're going to get a, you know, we're going to get a, a you know, the uh, complex conjugate one and then the one from the non-complex conjugate. So we can plug that in and we're going to just combine those all into one step. We're going to get E I to the E N minus E N prime T per H bar. Then we're going to get a bra N then our raising operator plus our lowering operator, ket n prime, and then we're going to have our h bar on 2m omega square root. All right, and now we don't have to do any integrals. That's the whole point of using this bra ket notation uh, in, in this problem is so that we don't have to evaluate any nasty integrals because hopefully if you went through chapters one and two of the textbook and did a bunch of those problems, you'll realize doing those integrals you know, while they're doable, are not necessarily fun, all right? But now here's the problem, is that we have two sums right here, all right? And, and you know, we obviously don't want to have two sums. We also have this broadcast notation, and we want to be able to visualize what kind of matrix is involved here. If we can visualize what kind of matrix is involved here, then we want to simplify these down into Kronecker deltas, okay? So from before, if hopefully you have gone through and done problem 3.39, you will have seen that, uh, just as an aside here, a bra and a raising operator plus our lowering operator and prime is equal to um, square root of n prime bra n cat n prime minus one that's for the lowering so i'm kind of flipping things around here a little bit but it doesn't matter it's just a standard combination via addition 
we can do them in any order we would like uh, times the square and then we have the square root of n prime plus one uh bra n n prime plus one okay so this is what we'd expect to get by doing that we can actually go ahead and substitute that in and we can further simplify that down by saying oh n prime plus one is equal to n and so on and so forth and so we can actually go ahead in and just substitute all of this in uh up here so we're just going to get rid of this we don't need to have all of this available right here that was just a brief little aside and uh when we substitute that in we're going to end up still having both of our two sums uh we're still going to have you know our constants uh you know our exponential is still going to remain the same And uh, then we're going to have the h bar onto m omega square root. But now we're going to have uh, a square root n prime chronic delta and n prime minus 1 plus root uh, n chronic delta n prime n minus 1. And that's what we're going to end up having. All right. And now that we have our chronic deltas, we can start to begin to see, uh, you know, how this is going to further simplify. OK. So let's take what we have here and let's take our knowledge of these chronic deltas and let's simplify it down to just one sum. And when I say simplify down to one sum, we're going to make this substitution and convert all our n primes uh to ends so that we just have an n all right and when we do that you know our as i said earlier our n prime is just equal to n plus one and so we're going to get the following let's bring out uh this constant stuff that doesn't depend on the ends h bar on two m omega square root sum over all ends and then what we're going to get is we're going to get a square root n plus one cn star cn plus one e to the i e n minus e n plus one t per h bar plus a square root n cn star cn minus one and then an e to the i e n minus e n minus one t per h bar all right and now we have you know everything in a form that we you know this might not look any easier, but it in fact is. We're only we only have one sum, so that makes things a lot a lot simpler. So that makes things a hell of a lot simpler. And then um, you know now we have uh, two uh, exponentials that look really similar. All right, and that's what we're actually going to examine next. We're going to look at the energy portions of each one of these exponentials with our knowledge that we're dealing with a quantum harmonic oscillator here. So for a general quantum harmonic oscillator, En is equal to h bar omega n plus one half. We know that. That's really straightforward. Okay. And now if we go back here and we look at this first exponential, we have an En minus En plus one. And so we can actually go ahead and we can, with our knowledge of this, we can go ahead and do that. So we have an En uh, minus En plus one. What we're going to get is we're going to get uh, h bar omega n plus one half minus h bar omega n plus one half plus one. All right. And when we simplify all that down, we just end up getting an h bar omega 
when we combine these two minus h bar omega really straightforward and then for this other energy right here we just are going to do the same exact thing so we have an e n minus e n minus one which is h bar omega n plus one half minus h bar omega n plus one half minus one which is just going to be the opposite of what we got before just h bar omega and so now we can substitute those in back over here so we're going to substitute those in so when we substitute those in we get the expectation value of x uh, you know, we have all this stuff out in front, square root, still summing over our n states. We're going to get a square root n plus 1, and then we're going to end up finding cn star cn plus 1 e to the minus i omega t, because we're going to have you know, the, that H bar and the, you know, that H bar cancel things out. All right. And then we're going to have uh, plus C and plus one star CN E to the I omega T. And that's what we're going to end up getting. Now what we can do though, is you can see we have a minus I omega T and an I omega T. And so immediately you should be thinking, hey, uh, we have something that looks relatively similar to uh, a cosine or a sine, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, through using, uh, through using, uh, you know, complex numbers to express sines and cosines from hopefully solved enough, uh, you know, differential equations to recognize that. Um, so here we go. We're going to now break this up and distribute things out. So this is going to be equal to h bar 2m omega square root uh, times the sum over all n's root n plus 1 cn star cn minus 1. And this is actually going to be one whole thing here. Uh, times e to the minus i omega t. And then, oh, whoops, I'm just realizing that, uh, oh, never mind, I just made the conversion. See, I'm even getting lost in my own work, but we're gonna then add that to um, the same thing out in front, h bar two m omega, Some over all n's root n plus one cn c star n plus one and then this is going to be an e to the i omega t all right now we're given let's do a little brief aside here we're, we're also given the following identity that c e to the minus i phi is equal to 2h bar on m omega square root times the sum over all n states root n plus 1 cn minus 1 star cn. We can apply this here. If you look, we have something very, very similar. Even though, you know, we have a, a c star uh, n minus 1 and a cn here, we have very, very similar things here. And although we have uh, a two here, you know, uh, in the numerator, and we have a two here in the denominator, so it's just half, all right. And so let's let's go ahead and apply this. And when so when we apply this, we're going to end up getting that the expectation value of x is equal to one half c e to the i phi e to the minus i omega t plus one half. C e to the minus i phi e to the i omega t. And now again, we have stuff here, 
you know, that indicates, uh, you know, that we have a sine and, and, and cosine here. We can combine these uh, exponentials up in either case. And we can really just use the identity here, you know, that, that, that you know, for a cosine, uh, a cosine of, let's say, x for a general uh, x is probably a bad choice here. Let's say cosine y uh, is going to be equal to just the real part of uh, e to the i y, or it's going to be equal to uh, e to the i y plus e to the minus i y all divided by two. And so we can take that and we can apply uh, apply this as well to simplify things down. Again, hopefully you've solved enough differential equations to, uh, you know, understand that. And then, so really simply, once we apply that, we're going to have our C constants. C constants are just going to hang out out in front. And then we're going to get a cosine omega t minus phi. And then we just get that from these being combined. And so that's all there is to it. And that's how you do problem 3.40. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below with any concerns or anything else. And if you like what you're seeing and it, you find it helpful, consider giving the video a like and consider subscribing.